All right, welcome back. In the last video, we were talking about Arduino schematic, and I kind of went through some of the items that I thought were worth going over that I'm gonna use in my design that were important for me. If you notice, I didn't cover anything last time about the power supply or voltage regulation or any of the power switching circuitry or any of that stuff because I'm not gonna use it in my design. I'm just gonna use the USB power. All right, so here we have this is going to be the Arduino schematic that I've created. This is going to go on the left frame, the, the side of the G1000 with the autopilot buttons on it. The left frame has the most buttons and switches and inputs and stuff, so that's where I'm going to put the uh, Arduino. I'm going to keep it on that PCB. That way I don't have to run as many uh, lines and connections out to the other circuit boards. So just to be clear, I'm splitting this up into three separate circuit boards. So there's one for the left side, one for the right side, and then one for the bottom uh, soft key buttons. All right, so last time we started with the USB input, so let's start with that uh, right here on this schematic. You can see that we've got our USB input here. I'm just using a USB micro connector. It would be nice to use a USB-C, but last time I looked at them, which was quite a long time ago, so maybe things have changed, but last time I looked at them, they were a little bit more expensive and I was trying to keep part costs down. Plus, I've already used this connector on my audio panel and it works fine. So uh, I already know how to use it, got a working design with it. I'm just going to stick with it. So from our USB input, you can see, let's start here. We've got our power coming in on our uh, USB bus and it's going to our uh, polyfuse here. We're going to keep that. We've also got our differential data pair with our 22 ohm uh, impedance matching resistors. Those will then go over here to our uh, our chip. We've got our ground pin and our shield. We're gonna connect to ground as well. All right, next over here, we've got our 16U2 chip. This is our crystal for it. You can see I've got my two load caps on either side. This is a little goofy looking, but it works. We've got our one mega ohm resistor that we talked about in the previous video. We've got our one of our power supply bypass capacitors, one there. We've got one up here at the top as well. We've got our inputs from our ICSP header, which is this guy right here. This is the six pin ICSP header. We've got our ground, we've got our power, we've got a 10K pull up resistor that keeps the reset high. Everything for the 16U2 chip, the reset is called reset two. On the other chip, it's just reset, not reset one or anything. So. That's how we can distinguish which uh, ICSP reset we're working with. All right, so we got all that ICSP taken care of. If you look down here, we've got our, tr our uh, transmit and receive pins. They go through a 1K resistor. That's our impedance matching resistor. These two go out to the uh, 2560 chip. So this is handling serial communication between these two chips. Next, we've got our receive and transmit indicators. These aren't strictly necessary, but they're nice to have. Then we've also got our reset here. This goes to the reset pin on the 2560 chip. So when this 16U2 chip is programming the 2560, it handles reset of the 2560 chip. This is the circuit that handles that. So we've got our resistor and we've got our capacitor there for that reset circuit. So that's it for the 16U2 USB and all its associated circuitry. So next up, let's look at the 2560, the, the basically the brains of the Arduino Mega here. So you can see, let's zoom in over here. When um, the part that I'm using in KiCad um, for this 2560, it comes in as like the main piece for all the IO on the chip. And then it also has this second part where they kind of break out all the power and ground pins into a separate block. So anyway, we've got all of our power supply bypass caps. Um, I just lumped all these together in parallel and tied them to power and ground. And then these will be as close to the chip as we can keep them. I don't know if that's the right way to do that, but that's how I've been doing it and it seems to work okay. So I'm just gonna stick with it. If anybody knows if that's like a poor practice or not the right way to go about it, uh, let me know, cause I'd be interested to uh, find out. Anyway, we've got our, this is our reset pin that came comes in from the 16U2 chip. Um, it controls the reset on this pin. You can see we're, we're, uh, we've got this pulled high through the 10K resistor there. 
Right here is our ceramic resonator that we talked about in the other video. Um, I think I mentioned that I was going to keep the one mega ohm resistor and for whatever reason I didn't. I did the schematic a few months back so I don't remember why. I think I just looked at the data sheet for the ceramic resonator and just went off of whatever um, it recommended to use for a 16 megahertz clock signal. So I think that's why. This already has the, uh, the load caps built into it so I don't have to worry about those. Uh, down here we've got a 36 pin connector. We're only using 34 of the pins, two of them aren't connected. This will go out to the right side frame. So this is the one that handles all the volume or the, the comm frequency knobs and buttons and um, all that stuff. So that's that connector. This connector is for all the soft key buttons that are in the bottom frame of the G1000, the bottom soft keys, there's 12 of them. So all 12 of those go through this connector. Next up, uh, let's skip that section for a second. Um, we'll come back over here. You can see we got another bypass cap here. This is for the analog reference. I said I wasn't gonna use that one, and like I said, I did this schematic months ago, and apparently I used it. I thought I didn't, but looks like I did, so um, it's not gonna hurt to keep it there, so I'll just keep it there. I don't think we strictly need that, but whatever, it works. Um, and then over here is our ICSP header for the 2560 chip. So here we've got our reset, and then our other data pins, our power and ground, pretty simple. Uh, this little section, I've actually ended up with, uh, what is this, one, two, six, six extra pins that we can use for I.O. for something else if we want to. So I'm just going to put a straight six pin header connector on the circuit board that you can solder on there if you want to take advantage of six additional I.O. that you can use uh, in a project. I don't have any plans to use it, so I just figure I might as well expose them there in case anybody ever wants to use it for something else. All right, and then next over here is, um, this is a multiplexer chip. So I don't know if I mentioned this before, but I'm gonna use MobiFlight for the firmware to handle all the communication back and forth between the Arduino and Microsoft Flight Simulator. MobiFlight's been around for like 10 years. They've got a good community of support. Um, everything's been used a lot, it's well tested. It's a good product to use and it saves me the time from having to develop the firmware from scratch to be able to talk back and forth between the flight sim and my hardware here. So it's like, why not take advantage of all that that they've built for the last 10 years, all that community support, all that testing and functionality and bug fixes and all the great work that they're doing there. I wanna build on top of that. So my plan is to use MobiFlight to control this Arduino for everything. And one of the things that Mobile Flight does is they do support this particular multiplexer. Uh, the more common part number for this is a 74H4067 multiplexer. What I'm going to do is use this multiplexer to handle all of the 12 soft keys as well as these additional four, our nav volume and nav swap and a few of these other buttons. These will be handled on this board, the left frame and then these 12 soft keys that go to, th to the bottom frame through the connector that we talked about over here. So the nice thing about this multiplexer is using only four pins on the 2560, I can control, what is this, 16 other buttons and switches and whatever. I need to use the multiplexer so that only four pins can control 16 pins and then I have enough IO available, including six IO left over that I could use for something else in the future if I wanted to. All right, so that is the USB and the, the two chips. Then over here on this page, we've got all the buttons and knobs, the encoders and things for this PCB for the left frame. This isn't in any particular order, I believe, but here we've got our nav encoder. This is the volume encoder. So it's a single rotary encoder with the, you know, you can push on the push on the knob for a, another button. We've got our nav swap button that lets you swap between nav one and nav two. Then we've got another, which one is this? We got our nav 
frequency encoder, which is the dual rotary encoder. So you got the outer knob and the inner knob that lets you change your navigation frequencies in the radios. We've got our, this is our heading encoder. And then we've got um, the altitude knob, which is another dual rotary encoder that lets you set your altitude in thousands or hundreds of feet. And then over here, we've just got all of these are just the single little push buttons, the little tactile buttons uh, for the autopilot. That's all those are. And then everything down here, these are all just LEDs with their associated um, current limiting resistor. So these are the LEDs that provide all the backlight for the circuit board. And that's it for the left frame. So let's come over here and look at the right frame. We're going to start over here on the right edge of the schematic. We have our 36 pin connector that uh, comes from our left frame, which has the Arduino on it. Um, so this is how we make the connection over to the Arduino is through this 36 pin connector. And you will notice that on, if I come back to my left frame schematic, you can see here we have the 36 pin connector on the left frame side. You can see pin one goes to the comm volume A. And then over here you can see pin one actually goes to ground and comm volume A is on pin 36. And if you saw my other videos where I talked about getting connectors oriented correctly is important. This is why, um, so if I just use my hand here as a connector, let's say my thumb represents where pin one is. So this would be pin one. When I have two connectors, let's see if I can get this right. So you have connectors facing the same direction. Well, pin one is always fine. But if the connectors face each other, they're actually oriented such that, let's see if I can fit myself, my thumb in here. Um, when they're oriented, facing each other, pin one here is this finger and pin one here is over here. So when you run the cable from pin one here, it's actually going into pin 36 on this connector. So that's why I have to wire them differently. I have to assign the pins differently on the connector because I know my connectors are gonna be facing each other because I've got one circuit board on the right frame and one circuit board on the left frame and they're gonna be facing each other. So the cable just goes straight across between them. So that means my, my pin ones are opposite of each other. So I have to make sure that pin one on my left frame coming from the Arduino goes into pin 36 on the other connector. Otherwise, everything will be backwards. So that's that. What we have over here, we'll kind of work right to left. So here we have our six buttons. This handles like your menu, your direct to, all that, all those buttons over there on the right frame. And then we've got this, it's like an encoder with like multiple switches on it. So you can move it right, you can move it left, you can move it up, you can move it down, you can push it, and then you can also twist the knob. So it's pretty interesting little little gadget there. Little encoder with lots of switches. Okay, over here on the left, this is our COM uh, volume encoder. Then right below that, we have our COM swap button, the button you push to switch between COM1 and COM2, which one's active. Then we've got our COM uh, frequency encoder. So this is the dual encoder, it lets you set the frequency on whatever uh, COM radio you're using, you're trying to set. This is your coarse and barrow knob. And then we've got right below that, the bottom is your FMS knob on the right frame. And then again, a whole bunch of LEDs with their associated resistors. Um, down here at the bottom. These are all just for the backlighting again for this uh, circuit board as well. All right, so now let's look at the bottom frame, which is pretty simple. Again, we've got our connector. This is a 14 pin connector, so 12 for our 12 soft keys, and then power and ground because we've got some LEDs that we wanna light on this circuit board as well for backlighting the buttons. 
If we come over here back to our 2560 on the left frame, this is where we had our, our 14 pin connector. So you can see pin one goes to soft key one, pin 12, soft key 12, and then we have power and ground. And then again, I flipped them over here. So ground is pin one, power is pin two, soft key one is pin 14. And then this one's really simple because it's just the 12 soft key, the little tactile push buttons. So these buttons are really simple. They have four pins on them, two are ground, and then a normally open pin on each side. I only need one connection here. So I'm just gonna tie these two pins together and then the two that go to ground are going to ground. And then when I set all these pins up in Mobile Flight, Mobile Flight's gonna um, automatically set the internal pull-up resistors on the Arduino for each one of these button pins. So when you push the button, you're just going to ground and that's gonna trigger a button push to the Arduino and to our flight simulator. So that's it for the bottom circuit board. And again, we just have a whole bunch of LEDs with their associated current limiting resistors. All right, well, that's it for these schematics. Um, eventually I'll probably push these up on GitHub for now. I want to get some circuit boards made, which is the next step. And then um, once I get the circuit boards made, I'll get them populated and soldered and tested. And then once I can validate the, the, that the design works and is good, and if there aren't any major changes that I need to make to it, I'll probably push them up to GitHub and make it all open source. So anybody could be free to download these or contribute via pull request or whatever. Um, but in the meantime, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.